is here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. The Wednesday night all-out go-home show for Dynamite, 928,000 viewers, matching February 5 for the show's fourth highest total of 2020. That was up 14.1% from last week when the show aired on Thursday night. 18 to 49 Dynamite averaged a .36 rating, up 24% from last week, and matching the highest number in that category since January 15. Show was eighth for the night on cable in the demo. It was only topped by two NBA playoff games that both aired against different portions of Dynamite. The episode of Sports Center that aired after the later game, an episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and news programming that was up from usual levels as we get closer to the November election. The Tuesday NXT airing on Sci-Fi, 183,000 viewers, 0.04 rating in 18-49, 125th on cable. I don't think this took one viewer away from the AEW show. Combined audience, 1.777 million. Highest since November of last year. Third highest ever. Of course, that is not going head-to-head. So, as I mentioned in the opening segment, and yesterday, and on the Brian and Vinny show, and on Observer Radio, I was not a big fan of this Dynamite show. I thought it was the weakest show of the year. Now, the biggest thing to me about the show, there were two segments. There was one segment that was, like, actively bad, okay? And that was this... Set up for the Casino Battle Royal. I mean, it was it was like what WWE does every year before the Royal Rumble. Two guys come out, two more guys come out, then everybody hits the ring, and then we have a big Battle Royal. We go to commercial, we come back, and we move on. But they actually didn't even do that. It was like, people came out, they kept coming out, then we had a Battle Royal, and nobody came out to break it up. There were people in street clothes in the Battle Royal that looked worse than when the Dark Order was beating on people in December and missing their punches. It was so bad. They go to commercial, and they come back, and they're still fighting. And I'm I'm flabbergasted. Jim Ross is wondering if there's any security available. It was a a bad, it was a objectively bad segment, okay? The other thing that I really didn't like was how long John Moxley beat on the lawyer. It was like five minutes. It was excruciating. You can't hear the crowd, so the comedy isn't getting over. And literally the only thing that mildly saved it for me was when John Moxley finally looks at the guy and goes, this is terrible television, and he boots him and he DDTs him and he pins him. That was awesome. But there's in no universe did this need to go that long. It was excruciating, okay? Now, my other problems with the show... It was, I mean, most of the problems were I was bored because the crowd was dead. Or I just disagreed with what they did. Like, for example, the Thunder Rosa match. I mean, the Thunder Rosa match, it was a technically good match. It wasn't a great match. But I just felt, why would you take somebody that nobody knows, say that they're the best women's wrestler in the world, and they're challenging for Karushita, and then she goes in there against somebody that we've never seen on Dynamite, and they go like seven minutes, and it's back and forth. When it's over, I'm not sitting there thinking, well, th- this is a big threat to... Th- I-, I mean, all I thought when it was over was, well, Hikaru Shida's going to destroy this woman. Or she's going to beat her handily. Those were the things that I-, I didn't like about the rest of the show. But you know what? Here's the key, and I don't know what this means, because we'll know on Saturday, and we'll know next Wednesday. The show was very, very stable throughout. It was not like they opened unopposed at 1.5 million viewers, and then, like, everybody was turned off, and by the end of the show, they had 600,000 viewers. That's not what happened at all. The show opened up, actually, believe it or not, low, 883,000 viewers. That's how the show opened. 832,000 for the second quarter. 860 for the third quarter. Jericho and Joey Janela... 899,000 viewers. The funny thing is, I was talking to people yesterday, and this is people in AEW who were like, man, the second hour, that show, that second hour sucked. So it's not like it's just me, everybody. I mean, even they recognize the second hour. I shouldn't say everybody, obviously, but the people I talked to, they, they thought the second hour was a terrible hour. First quarter of the second hour, 899,000 viewers. 
Jake Roberts, Eddie Kingston, that whole brawl that I thought was the ob- most objectively bad thing on the show, one million viewers for that quarter. The Thunder Rosa quarter, 972,000. The Swole Britt Baker angle, 974,000. And then the main event with Moxley and the lawyer and the MGF beatdown, million viewers, 999,000 viewers for that segment. So, I don't know what to tell you. I thought it was a bad second hour, but the second hour was stronger than the first. The second hour held out throughout the entire second hour. I mean, I guess you could argue that's a lot of people to see a bad hour. But the fact of the matter is it didn't turn them off. So I guess we'll see what happens at the pay-per-view. As noted in the opening segment, this is their biggest audience for a go-home show that they have ever done. All of the last three pay-per-views, they were either average or below average in numbers, and they did right around 100,000, 110,000 or whatever on pay-per-view. It's 60 bucks a pop. So we got a pay-per-view this coming weekend, and I thought the go-home show was weak, but they did a million viewers pretty much consistently throughout the show, especially that second hour. I mean, this could do a huge number. I mean, maybe that second hour turned people off, and it won't do a huge number. I don't know. But Tony Khan thinks this is going to be the best pay-per-view of the year. And he seemed very bullish about next Wednesday's show. So, we'll see. NXT is on Tuesday. They've got a championship match. AEW is Wednesday. They've got the follow-up to the pay-per-view. Both shows are unopposed. We'll see if the finish of the Iron Man match turned people off. We'll see if the second hour of this Dynamite turned people off. Today, my gut feeling is it's not going to turn anybody off, either of them. And I know people are really angry about that Iron Man finish, but I feel with six days, seven days, I think people are going to watch the show in pretty much the same numbers as they did last week. I think they're going to get a finish this time, although I think there's going to be other stuff happening. I'm pretty confident about that. And I think that if they have a great pay-per-view on Saturday and there's a lot of buzz and people are talking about it, I think next Wednesday's show, even with the NBA, is going to be a very, very big number. One night has never killed anybody. That includes some of the worst shows I've ever seen, like the Finger Poke of Doom. The Finger Poke of Doom did not kill WCW in one night. It was months of the worst shows I've ever seen to run people off. So, there you go. That's my thoughts on the numbers. You know, with AEW, maybe they've been on to something, and that's why they drew, you know, the the crowd that they did on Wednesday night. Or maybe the TV planets were just in alignment for them, and they were able to pick up a lot of people. And if it's the latter, oof. You know, uh, you didn't put your best foot forward there, and you're going to have something to make up for next week, and we'll find out next week. Forget about Saturday. Saturday shows nothing. You know, the people that were going to spend money on an AEW pay-per-view, they're going to do that, and the quality that's going to be presented on that pay-per-view is going to be completely separate from what we saw on this TV show. Those chickens come home to roost next week uh, when it comes to the rating. And will they get a bump after this pay-per-view? We'll see. Did they do any damage last week on TV that will make people not want to come back after the pay-per-view? I guess we're going to find that out, too. But when it comes to NXT, I think when it comes to the Iron Man match, it's, you know, you can... (laughs) Is there really anything to be that outraged over? I mean, at this point in your fandom, I mean, you're probably pretty calloused up and the way 2020 has gone, you got to be pretty fatigued. So I think probably it's just a matter of there's been other things to be outraged about. And that's why people aren't really hammering that as much as I guess a small minority are. Hey, for this person on the Twitch chat that said I'm comparing Wednesday's show to the finger poke of doom. No, I'm not. Wednesday's show had a bad hour. I'm pointing out that even one of the worst shows I ever saw in my life, which was 10,000 times worse than that second hour of Dynamite, it still did not kill the audience and kill the promotion in one night. Back in a moment, Observer Live. <laughs> 